Chocolate Talk Times. We are back for another video. Today's topic is about our urine, urine analysis that is. There's so much to cover in this topic. I will divide into four parts. The first one is urine analysis overview and pre-analytical. The other three videos will be parts of urine analysis physical, chemical, and microscopic. In this video, I will cover the following topics what and why urine analysis is done, as well as different collection methods. Without further ado, let us get into it. Almost every time when I go to see my doctor, I'm asked to provide a urine sample, regardless of why I was there. Does this sound familiar to you? Do you ever stop and ask yourself, why do I need to pee in a cup when I come here for a cold or a flu? And more importantly, not problems in a restroom department, that's for sure. But yet, I have to pee in a cup even before I can see a doctor. I think most of us who are watching this video have experienced this at least once, right? Tell me down below that I'm not the only one here. The truth is, your urine can tell a lot about your health, as you will see in a bit. That leads to our first question. Why is urine analysis done? Urine analysis is done to check your overall health. Urine analysis is one of the most frequent tests done as a part of routine health screening. Likely due to simplicity in collections and how much it can tell us about your health. A urine analysis can find infections problems such as UTI, urinary tract infections, or even more serious problems such as kidney failure, kidney stones, diabetes, liver disease, pregnancies, and so much more. Wow, who knew urine can tell us so much? What is urine analysis? Urine analysis is simply analysis of urine by looking at and testing the physical, chemical, and microscopically properties of the patient urine sample. The urine specimens are easily obtained for the most part. Nonetheless, there are a few collection methods to help people who have difficult voiding urine. We will also be talking about these methods in a little bit. Prior to urine analysis, a clean urine sample is collected into a specimen cup and brought to laboratory for testing. It is best to transport it to laboratory as soon as possible because delaying in testing could alter the test results. For instance, bacteria could multiply during the time that specimen is awaiting testing and the bilirubin level change due to light exposure. Generally speaking, Urine is one of the easiest specimens to obtain. Accurate test results begin with a proper specimen collection. Urine specimens are not hard to obtain, but there are several methods available if needed, such as clean catch, catheterization, superpubic aspirations, and urine collection bag. Clean catch or mistream. Clean catch a midstream specimen is the most commonly used as specimen collection method, and it is the easiest way. If the urine specimen is to be used for culture, the specimen should be collected in a sterile cup. It is almost always done in a sterile cup anyways, just in case a urine culture is necessary after urine analysis. What is the proper way to collect clean cash or midstream specimen? First, prior to collection, the external genitalia has to be cleaned thoroughly with a mild antiseptic solution. Usually, patients will be given a packet containing a tissue soaked in mild antiseptic solution to clean the external genitalia with. Second, when cleaning with sterile wipe, be sure to focus on the urinary opening. Men should wipe the tip of the peanut. Women can clean their labia from front to back. Third, the actual collection part of your urine. We divided the urine into three parts, the initial, middle, and end portion. This may be a little bit tricky, but this is how it should be collected. Void the initial portions of your urine and let it go down the toilet. Open the sterile containers and continue without touching the outside of your genitalia area. And the end portion of your urine should go down the toilet as well. 
up next is urine collected by catheterization. This is usually done with patients who have difficulty lifting themselves. It is also sometimes used for female patients to avoid contaminations like menstrual blood. Another benefit of urine collections by catheter is that once inserted, we can monitor the patient's urine output and also have continuous access to the urine samples. Even though this method could avoid contaminations, the procedure of inserting the catheter could introduce bacteria and cause infections if not done properly. Due to the difficulty of the collection method and potential danger, catheterization is not routinely used. Superpubic aspirations. A superpubic aspiration is another method that can be used to obtain a sterile urine specimen. This can be used in place of the catheter if only one specimen is needed. This method is done by inserting a needle directly into the bladder and collecting urine samples. Benefits of using these methods are to avoid contaminations from vaginal and ureters and can also be used to obtain urine from infants and small children. Urine collection bag. This method is used to obtain urine from infants and small children. A pediatric urine collection bag is attached to the patient's genitalia. The bags are soft and pliable and cause little discomfort to the patient. However, one thing to be watched out for this method is fecal contamination. Before we get into more details about testing process in the next video, have you ever taken a look at your own urines and noticed the different colors? For instance, first morning urine tends to be darker yellow to amber or even honey color. This is because your body was dehydrated overnight. Have you noticed any other urine colors? If you have, do you know what the colors tell you about your health? If you haven't, then take a look before you flush next time, but don't forget to flush though. In the next video, I will talk about the physical part of urine analysis, which also includes the different color of urines and what each color means. I hope to see you then. Thank you for staying with me until the end. What do you want to know next? Do you want to know more about blood bank, chemistry, microbiology? If you have any burning questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell. I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talks. And as always, remember, your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.